You're right, guys, Jimmy Ding here, bringing you another fantastic Argosian build on Conan Exiles PC. This is meant to serve as a small player base for a three or maybe four man tribe, or alternatively, as with a lot of my builds, this could be tweaked to be a point of interest on any PvE server. I've stuck mainly to non mod build pieces other than some flags and a couple other very minor decorative bits of tap that I've thrown around just to make it look cool. I want to show you that you can still make a really nice looking build using minimal or no mods. As always though, the mods I currently have installed are in the description. As you can see from this nighttime flyover though, you are in for a treat. Today's build is located on Noob River by the Sentinels in square G3 of the map. There are a few trees and rocks on this bit of land, so get your lumberjack boots on. Now that they're all cleared, let's roll out the floor plan. I've used Argosian and Aquilonian foundations for the floor of the main structure and have an outer layer of reinforced stone foundations to break up the monotony for the guard areas. I've found reinforced stone actually goes really well with the Argosian. I've also used multiple levels for this build. As a reference, the reinforced stone and Argosian foundations on the main area were raised to the highest position the game would allow you to place it. The yellow shaded areas were then lowered 4 levels using the fence foundation method. The green shaded area is 3 levels lower and the blue pool area is another 3 or 4 levels lower than the green area. So let's get to the building. I start with the armoury on top of which I'm going to build the villa. The armoury is sunken into the floor as mentioned before because I always like to put the dirty manual labour areas of my builds out of sight and out of mind. This is both for security reasons as much as it is any Argosian lord doesn't want to see some grimy peasants whilst he chills by the pool. This layout does mean there's a floor of just solid foundations between the basement and the upper villa which some might view as wasted space but I'm of the persuasion that that's a small price to pay to have such a cool looking armoury dungeon. I've used frontier wooden flooring on some areas of this build because it looks a lot more polished and fancy than the insulated wood ones do. If I'd done a bit more forward planning I could have made sure the tiles I placed those wooden foundations on were facing the same direction but hey we'll just have to let that source of eye twitch slide this time. With the upper floor plan now set out, I now put on the roof to the main villa building. Rather than go for a boring cube roof, I tried to make it feel like each room on the upper floor had its own little roof section. This makes the end product look a lot more interesting.
What's a villa without a couple nice balconies? Again, the frontier wedges look a lot neater than the insulated wood ones. I wanted the central garden to be enclosed but not by solid walls, I therefore use doorways and Argosian awnings to create walkways that are way more light and airy and complement the garden really well. Next I start fleshing out the rear plaza area. Some of my older viewers might recognise this design from my Argosian palace build I did, my first serious Code and Exiles build video I did in fact. If you haven't seen that already please go check it out. The tiered pillars and Argosian roof give this build a really authentic Roman type feel which I really like.
After the main structure for the pool and plaza was slapped down, I start work on the perimeter wall around the villa. As this is only a simple villa build, I don't go for huge thick castle walls. I instead use normal walls combined with fences and some strategically placed lookout towers to serve as basic defences for it. These are simple and easy to build but look really good nonetheless. I do the same layout on the opposite side so it's all nice and symmetrical. To finish locking down the villa, I now go around adding doors of various types depending on what type of room it leads through to. Now it's time to start decorating, starting with a nice fountain area in the garden. I further add a medium sized decorative tree from a mod, a lattice trellis area with some seating and a refreshment table before moving on to another area. I really like how this garden turned out and want to start incorporating more gardens into my builds. If you do want to see another garden area I am proud of though, check out my Yamatai Trade Hub video which features a really cool Japanese style garden in it. I couldn't make an Argosian build without having some big imposing statues towering over a shiny polished marble plaza now could I? This plaza serves as a bit of a centrepiece for the rear section of the build and serves as an attractive route to the pool. As the pool is relatively small and the walkways around the edge are quite narrow, I didn't want to clutter it up too much. I finish it off with a nice table and chairs set, complete with more food and drink for those leisure loving Argosians. I now return to the upper floor to deck out the kitchen and shared bedroom. I've kept these two rooms fairly low key because I imagine the occupants spending most of their time outside.
the basement is looking fairly empty so I throw down some crafting stations. It is a bit tight for space but I managed to get all the main stations down as well as a fair amount of chests for storage. Crafting thralls love to be all cramped up together anyway and the ones who I place near later should think themselves lucky they're not in a PvP 2x2 build. Lighting is really important for making or breaking a build. I tend to place my lighting in the night time so I can actually see how well lit the build is. I also try to keep my light sources as symmetrical as possible to each other as well as on the same level to each other. Slapping torches down willy nilly all over the place just ruins the attention to detail factor you get if you just spend a little time thinking about it. Now I'll place some banners and flags around because the Argosians love to represent. You'll see me use a couple of mod banners from the Age of Calamitous mod which look really good close up but if you look away slightly they can tend to pop in and out of existence which is a bit annoying. You still can't deny they really bring the villa together though. Finally, I now build a rope walk bridge across the river so the occupants don't have to get soggy boxer shorts every time they want to go to the desert. I do rip up a bit of the plaza I'd already built just to give the bridge entrance to the villa a bit more of a secure feeling, else any crocodile in exile could wander in and start crapping in the pool.
And with that, the build is complete. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, then please consider giving that like button a little tease there. If you're new to the channel as well, please consider subscribing as I'm really close to hitting 100 subs and it's motivating me more than ever to make more videos despite my full-time soul-crushing office job taking precedence. I now leave you with a nice little walkthrough as per usual. This has been Jimmy Ding. Happy playing guys.